I think it was like maybe October at this point, and I knew that that December I was going to be going on vacation with my then girlfriend, my now fiance, and um, I wanted to read some good screenplays. Like it was really just that simple. I, I wanted, I knew I was going to be reading scripts, and I wanted them to be good. I was desperate for them to be good, and I probably just def defaulted to sort of my management consulting thinking and said. I'm just going to send a survey to the 75 people I know who are in the same situation that I am in, and I'm going to ask them to send me a list of their 10 favorite screenplays from this year that haven't been made yet. And that's what I did. I sent an email to 75 people and said, send me a list of your, of your of 10 scripts, or of up to 10 scripts that fit the following description. One, you found out about the script this year. Uh, two, uh, the, script will not, the movie version of the script will not be in theaters by the end of this year. And three, you love the script. Those are the only requirements. And... Um, you know, I think 72 of those 75 people participated. 20 of them came back to me and said, you know, I've got a friend who I think would love to participate. Is it cool if they send you a list too? And I was like, absolutely, the more the merrier. And so I think the first list had 93 voters. Um, and I just, you know, um, put them in list form. And actually, I can show you guys what that list looked like because it's pretty janky. So. I don't even know if it's visible from there, but like you can see in ver it's, it, the blacklist is sort of written very faintly in 2005. That was my uh, incredible PowerPoint graphic design um, <laughs> that I learned at McKinsey. And then, yeah, this is, this is that first list. Um, you know, Things We Lost in the Fire, Juno, Lars and the Real Girl, Only Living Boy in New York, both by Alan Loeb, uh, Charlie Wilson's War, The Kite Runner, and then a bunch of other stuff. Um, and... I went on vacation, like I literally called around town, got, a cop got copies of these scripts and went on vacation and read them and a lot of them were really good, it was amazing. It made for a very good vacation. And um, came back to Los Angeles, this was in the days before I had a Blackberry and sort of everyone had a way to check their email at all times. And I checked my email and it had been forwarded back to me a hundred times. And um, I went to dinner the first night I got back with my girlfriend and um, a friend of hers from college who had just moved out to LA had been at a dinner the previous night with some very senior people in the industry. And she was trying to figure out how to get into the industry. And, and one of them, who was a, a very high level studio executive, was like, well, what you need to do is get this thing called the blacklist and read those scripts, because then you'll be prepared to like, get, get any job in town. Okay. And my, you know, my, my girlfriend is kicking me under the table like, what have you done? <laughs> um, and I was sure that when I got back to work on, like, on that Monday, I was going to be fired. Um, because there had not been any sort of aggregation of information that had been shared in this way. And on top of it, Leo is a private person and doesn't necessarily want people that work for him out there doing stuff that's very public. Um, but, uh, but fortunately, it was sort of an open secret. It was a sort of a secret that I had done it. Like no one knew that it was me and my name wasn't on it. So I don't think my bosses realized that this thing that everyone was talking about had been created by me. Um, and I just kept it quiet. And then six months later, I got a phone call from an agent at William Morris who was like, listen, I have this new client. I think you're really going to like his script. And, and don't tell anybody, but I have it on really good authority that this is going to be the number one script on next year's blacklist. <laughs> Um, yeah, and I don't, and he obviously did not realize that I was the person that created the blacklist um, and maybe didn't understand what a survey was conceptually. <laughs> um, and it was a really good object lesson for me and a good object lesson for everyone, which is don't trust agents, um, or at least trust but verify. Um, and, um, and that was sort of my, my first indication, my, my second indication that this thing had significantly more value than just a way for me to find good material. And so I decided to do it again the next year and um, was outed by the LA Times. Um, I got a stern talking to by my bosses, but I did not get fired. There was a watershed moment, I think it was in 2007, um, when Lars and the Real Girl and Juno were both nominated for Best Original Screenplay. And that was significant because those had, those had been two of the top three scripts on the first list. And then all of a sudden everyone said, oh, not only is this thing maybe a really good marketing tool for us as agents and producers, but maybe like the scripts that are on it are really good. Um, and that if we, if we develop them with people who are also really talented, they may make really good movies. Um, and I think that's been borne out over time. And I think that's, to some extent, that's, a con that's because of a virtuous cycle where because people believe that the scripts on it are good, they then attach re like really good, strong talent to them and they end up making the movies, the scripts better and the movies better uh, than they would be if they were sort of just otherwise developed in the system. But the numbers are pretty remarkable, and I had talked about some of them. 
Um, you know, over 250 films out of about 600 scripts that have been on the list have been produced. Those movies, I think, have made over $16 billion in worldwide box office, been nominated for 140 Academy Awards, uh, winning, I think, 30 of them, and three of the last five Best Pictures, and seven of the last 12 screenwriting Oscars. So I think it's really important, though, for me to state as plainly as possible that, you know, I and we, now that The Blacklist is sort of a bigger entity, I've got a partner who handles all the stuff for the website, and we have an employee now, don't deserve the credit for the success of those films. Like, the success for those films goes to, rightfully, the people who made them, the writers, the directors, and everyone down to production assistants and craft service. Like, they're the ones that make the movies, and they deserve the credit for it. What, what I'm really excited about and what I'm really proud of is the fact that um, the Blacklist, I think, plays a role in catalyzing those movies toward into existence by shining a very bright spotlight on people, and writers in particular, who have done really good work. Um, which I think is unfortunately oftentimes, writers as a class are oftentimes sort of forgotten in the industry. And for me, they're often the most critical part. I mean, you can make a bad movie from a good script, but good luck trying to make a good movie from a bad script. Um, and as a consequence, like writers just deserve a hell of a lot more credit than they get. And, and with that credit should also come money. Um, though it doesn't, oftentimes. So, um, so I think the role of the blacklist is sort of fundamentally unknowable, but in aggregate also undeniable, and that's sort of been my focus. But by 2010, the idea of a once yearly PDF was frankly just sort of adorable. And so, uh, and, and I was also, you know, like sort of reading all these stories about 22 year olds who had, who had gone to my alma mater who were billionaires now um, because they knew how to code. And I was, you know, coming home every day, miserable at my studio job and saying, why didn't I major in computer science? What the <laughs> hell was I thinking? Social and political theory, I have no practical job skills. Um, and, and at a certain point, my fiance was just like, uh, look, my cousin was a math and computer science major at Tufts, he's super smart. He's looking for a side project, call him. And if you don't call him, stop talking to me about this because you've complained about it enough, do something about it. Um, and I will forever be in her debt for that. Um, so you know, I, called, I called her cousin Dino and said, look, I want to build a, a real-time version of the blacklist. I want industry professionals to be able to go online, rate the screenplays they've read. Those ratings should be able to aggregate into a real-time list that is sort of the best of at any given moment. And just for extra nerdiness sake, let's build a screenplay recommendations algorithm, kind of like Netflix or Amazon, where based on your taste and everybody else's taste, we can predict what you'll like or suggest things that you might like based on your taste. And, and he listened to me for about an hour and was like, yeah, it's actually not that hard. <laughs> um, <laughs> I was like, great, terrific. Um, I'll give you some basic instructions and you can build it. And, and, that's, and that's what we've been doing for the last two years, really. I mean, until last September, uh, it was, for me, it was a total side job. You know, I joked that I would work from 9 to 9 for Will Smith and then 9 to 3 a.m. for me. Um, and for him, it was, you know, 9 to 9 for Akamai Technologies in Cambridge, Massachusetts, and 9 to 3 for, for him. And um, this is the, the, the site that we built. And it, it functioned exactly like that. You know, industry professionals can go online, rate the scripts they've read. Those aggregate to sort of a uh, list of the best scripts in town that you can filter by any number of different uh, uh, categories. If you want to see, for example, um, comedies that don't have a director attached yet but do have a producer, you can do that search and it'll give you a list of the highest rated scripts uh, that are available for, act, for, for a director to get involved in. Um, and then, in, and, and, and then, you know, I've been doing a lot, as the blacklist guy, I've been doing a lot of panels and, and Q&As for the last seven years. And, and the first question that often gets asked, and I'm glad I don't have to answer it anymore, is, that's great. Like, you made a list that helps people that are already part of the system. Like, you know, they are, like, you look at the list and they all have agents. Um, and, and great, like, they're, they're definitely underappreciated and they're definitely undervalued, but like, I wrote a good script, I, do, I think it's pretty good, and my uncle doesn't work at CAA, and I don't live in Los Angeles. How do I get my script to somebody who can get it on the list? Um, and unfortunately, there was no good answer to that question. You know, the best answer was, well, submit to the Nichols Fellowship, and if you're one of the top 30, someone will probably call you. But beyond that, there was really nothing. Um, and I asked around, because I, I was disappointed in having to give that answer. Um, and it was something that was acutely problematic for me, I think, as a black kid from Georgia. Issues of access have always been really important to me. And you, know, you don't have to sort of think too many steps ahead to, to know that 
if the only way to get access is by either knowing someone in the business or sort of being the right type of person, uh, the sort of chilling of the, the, the effects on culture that that can engender and the consequences of those effects on culture. I mean, you, you see it when it comes to gender, you see it when it comes to race, you see it when it comes to sexuality, you see it when it comes to religion. So, um, so we decided to build something that solved that problem. Um, and, and we built a site, we, we sort of expanded the, the scope of the website, which allows um, anyone on earth to upload a screenplay and, uh, and have it evaluated by a team of readers that, that we've hired. Um, there is a cost to this. You have to pay $25 a month to host your script on our site and $50 to have it read by one of the readers that we've hired. Um, but if it's good, um, we tell the entire industry about it. So you upload your script. If it's evaluated positively by our readers, we have a, a system of emails that goes out on a weekly basis to all of our 2,000 industry professionals that range from agency assistants to studio presidents saying here's a list of really good scripts that don't currently have representation that you can download via the site and if you like them you can get in touch with these writers and, uh, and do something with them.